It's Rosh Chodesh, a good Chodesh. It's a new month, month of Nisan, month of miracles. Nisan means miracles. What greater miracle than the exodus of the Jewish people that happens in this month? The exodus of the Jewish people that occurred 3,335 years ago, coming up uh, in two in two weeks it'll be three thousand three hundred and thirty five years ago um since we left egypt how uh, we still remember you know how we left in a hurry we didn't have time for the dough to rise so we had this baked you know crackers called matzah unleavened bread we still know the whole story. We haven't lost the story. The Jewish people haven't lost their story. We continue it, an unbroken chain. And today is Rosh Chodesh that emphasizes the beginning of the month that includes the entire month. I mean, it's the head that includes everything. Amazing. Unreal. Oh, unreal. Welcome to Tanya Today, Rabbi Ronnie Fine, coming to you from Chabad, Zich and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. We welcome from around the world. Michael is in Germany. Good Chodesh, good afternoon. June, very late at night only like 12 30 a.m she's in australia simcha is in florida same time zone as here we have john he's in north carolina jackie she's in charlotte north carolina of two carolina north carolinians how do you call them we have another australian louise is with us welcome Rachamim is in Houston, Texas. Diane is in Arizona. Uh, Yohanan in California. Davida in Liba in New York. Agnes is joining us from Germany. Cindy is in Florida. David is back in Gold River, California. All right. Rina is in Colorado joining us. Booker Tov. Elise in West Virginia has joined us. Lynn is in Long Island having a good morning. Bob in Morocco is with us. Leah in Florida has joined us. AJ. I forgot. Are you from Toronto? Anna in New York. Who else? Gabriel is in Brazil, Boker Tov. Eugenia in Calgary has joined us. Stan, good afternoon in England. Sandy is in Michigan joining us. We have on Clubhouse, we have Vachi and Vilma, we have Michael, we have Adam, we have Marcy, we have Alan, Lottie, Kay, Ashley. We have Examinatora, Charles, all right. Amazing. We have Nancy joining us. Shuram. Rachel in South Carolina. Koi is in Lima, Peru. Yep, from all over. Beautiful, beautiful. So what's greater? Torah study? Doing a mitzvah? Torah study is a greater union with the divine. And we sense that when we're learning, that there's a special connection. We feel so much more connected. That's probably why you're here. It's because you feel very connected. And that connection helps throughout the day. Because 
one problem we have in the world today is a complete disconnect. As we have so many more tools to connect, but it seems like those tools are creating greater disconnect. And when we learn Torah, that's when we feel the most connected because it's the deepest connected connection can be made through Torah with God, with the divine. Mitzvahs, on the other hand, are done with a material object of this world, whether it's the leathers to put on tefillin, leather that you write a, 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 a mezuzah and put on your doorpost, a doorposts of the home, whether it's a coin to give to charity, and the effort that's involved that a person engages in to make the money or that money could be used for their uh, own satisfaction and you give to charity that's creating a greater dwelling place for God in this world fulfilling what he needs so there's the needs of the soul and needs of God so when the needs of God can't be done that comes first needs of the soul the divine soul that it wants to be connected well it is connected but it wants to reveal that connection not to be not to allow the body and the animal soul to imprison it then what do we do the needs of the soul we study torah to connect there's another amazing quality in the study of torah that is unique to it and that is that Torah study is referred to as a kaired betayra lashon kriya to call so like you you read the Torah like literally reading from the Torah right but there's a deeper dimension to it it doesn't mean merely that you study the Torah by reading it, right? But in one who studies the Torah is calling upon God. Hmm. Calling upon him to what? Come and study with you. He becomes your study partner, so to speak, right? I mean, so to speak. In reality, okay? As right now, that's happening in our Torah study similar to a friend that calls their friend you call your friend calling them to come to to be with you to connect with you or as a child will call a father any parent but metaphor of father father in heaven right to join to become a part not to ever leave alone This is the meaning that we say in the prayer of Ashri uh, in Psalms Tehillim 145. It says, Korav Hashem lechol Hashem is close, God is close to all those that call him. It's all that call him in truth. So there's two things. There's calling God that you're close and then calling him in truth even closer so to call him this is another way we call him and that's in prayer when we pray we're calling upon God he listens to our prayers no doubt about it however there's a greater way to call him even greater than prayer and that's in truth and truth is only Torah that's the only truth there is no other truth now other things might this is parenthetical other teachings may have a aspect of truth to it a component of truth to it but it's not real truth it's not ultimate truth ultimate truth is only Torah after all that's God's wisdom and his will right so 
So, yes, in prayer we call upon God, and He hears our prayers, and is and loves to hear our prayers. But the deeper way to call upon Him is in truth. And that's Torah. Why? Well, well, why? And, and prayer is not truth. Because prayer is about you praying. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, you know, the son that calls his father and, hey, dad, what's happening? He's on, you know, campus, uh, university, college. He's calling. He says, what's going on? What's happening? He says, no, son, how much money do you need? <laughs> uh, meaning, why is the son calling? Because he needs something. So is that really truly calling? No. You're not really making the call. You just need something. So you make a call. That's okay. God says that's fine. You know, if you need something, call upon me. And uh, I'll, you know, I'm there for you. I'm there with you. That's fine. But it's not truth. Right, not really calling, but when you study Torah, right now, you're we're, uh, we're calling God to come and sit with us, like like you like calling a friend up, or like a child calls a father. Come be with me. God's with us. In contrast, the one who does not call him through Torah, but merely calls out, you know, Father, Father. Over which someone who calls in such a way, the, the prophet laments and says, there is none who calls by your name. Meaning, by your name, because all the words of Torah are God's names, so called through Torah. Concludes the Alter Rebbe chapter 37 and says, if you dwell upon this idea, any intelligent person will draw upon themselves a great sense of awe that when you engage, as we are doing right now in Torah's study, we have called God and God comes to connect and be with us. That's extremely powerful. Let's maybe close our eyes for a moment and just think about that. Right now in our Torah study, we call upon God. That's how powerful Torah study is. And that God comes to be with us, to be our study partner. And hence, thinking about this should permeate us with a sense of awe in our engagement. That's an amazing empowerment. Right. So it's one thing that we connect with God and have in the, a, a, the deepest bond through Torah. But what an empowerment that through my study I'm calling upon him and he comes let that sink in the Shrina is there So, we conclude the chapters 35 through 37 that speak about bringing the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence of God. So we bring the Divine Presence of God and create a dwelling place for God through the material world in doing a mitzvah. 
But we also bring that presence of God, the God we call upon, and we connect with Him through the study of Torah, creating further dwelling place in this world, a deeper bond, a deeper connection. Deeper bond, deeper connection, but the greater transformation comes through the act of a mitzvah, because the act of a mitzvah engages the vital soul, the animal soul, that gives vitality to the body, and the body, because they're involved in the mitzvah, because you can't do a mitzvah without the medium of your, <coughs> excuse me, of your body. And therefore, the metaphor that we started off with in chapter 35 is that there is oil, there's a wick, and a light. The light is the light of God. The oil is the mitzvah that we do, the good deeds that we do, the mitzvah. Right? And the wick is the conduit of that good deed is done through the conduit of the body. Again, only a body can produce or can be the conduit to take the good deed that produces the light. And in producing that light, it's producing, you know, when you look at the the wick, the wick becomes uh, blackened. And because it becomes blackened, therefore it can hold the light. So metaphorically that means because the body becomes blackened, meaning metaphorically there's bittle right? That blackening is the knot of the wick, right? The, the, the lessening of the wick, the knot of the wick, bittle, self-abnegation. So by the self-abnegation of the body that it doesn't follow its agenda, but it becomes a conduit for, through the, the good deed that we do, the mitzvah that we do, Right? And with the physical thing in this world, we create a light of God. Right? That's what holds that what that's what the flame is holding on to. That encompasses the body and the limb of the body that's involved in the mitzvah, the animal soul that's in, you know, involved in in the mitzvah, and it becomes transformed in the moment, not for good, it's only by the righteous, and it becomes transformed into godliness. And that creates a dwelling place for God in the materiality of this world, because it's being subdued, sub subjugated to a higher reality, the reality of the presence of God, the light of God. That's what the mitzvah does. Torah study, on the other hand, gives us a greater union. Torah study also gives us the capacity that we call upon God to be my study partner, to be there with me, and of course united with it in a perfect unity. Very powerful ideas. So, you got any questions here? There will be a TRC today, a makeup, 4.30. Davida, the last hour of Shabbos is said that Hashem comes to stay with us. Is this the time of the increase in prayer? Yeah, it's a loftier, well, actually we do Hasidus then. Interesting. So we uh, learn at the end of Shabbos Hasidic teachings, Mimer, because it's the loftiest part of Shabbos near the end and um yeah so that's what our custom is to do and the, and the idea of calling upon god yes very good to the uh, video now let's see another question one second alan anybody else with a question no Alan, please share with us. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. 
and unmute yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. I do that all the time. I forget to unmute and yeah. I just keep talking and uh, nothing's happening. Yeah, you know, sometimes uh, you need to talk to yourself, you know. <laughs> I know. I, I do that often, Rabbi. <laughs> So what what is greater, Torah study or charity? I, I say white, white, white shoes. Really, in a certain sense, you know, because um, and and we have the capability of uh, of doing both actually on in in our in our internet Torah world because we have this thing called Safaria. Mm -hmm. and Safaria is an amazing resource that has. You know, amazing texts having to do with the Torah and Tanakh and Jewish philosophy and Hasidut and Kabbalah and mm, right. you name it. You know, yeah. and and the thing is also um, when you make use of Safaria, they you know they they you have the opportunity actually to donate so that other people can um, make use of these resources. So. There, there is actually that wonderful opportunity of doing both by making use right. of Safaria and digging into Torah study and supporting the app that makes this available to so many people. Very good. Such a, yep. Yep. So absolutely, so we need to we need to study. We need to give uh, charity. We need to uh, pray. We need to do all of the above. <laughs> But sometimes there's an opportunity like this to do both, you know? Right. At okay. the same time. All right. Thank you. All right. Oh. David, I just put up uh, Safari up on the uh, uh, on the Facebook page. If everyone wants to go there. Yeah, it's a great resource that you uh, can get all, just about anything there in Jewish teachings. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. All right. Um, Yeah, so as far as the last, you know, part of um, of Shabbos, yeah, if you sing your Tillam there, then wonderful, absolutely. As I mentioned again, it's the highest point of Shabbos, and Raiva Deraivin, as it's called, the will of will of the Almighty, and to um, devote yourself to Hasidus then, it's definitely, you know, yeah, Chabad custom is even to say a Hasidic discourse. But, uh, yeah, if you're using it to say Tehillim, it's also wonderful. Absolutely. Great. All right. Um, folks, Rambam, coming up. And again, uh, TRC today at 4.30. We'll put it out later. Uh, do come and join us. Um, thank you all for being a part of this wonderful daily uh, journey that we take together. It's, it's amazing. I'm Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you for Chabad Zuch and Kedush Montreal Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. I'm good Chodesh, everybody. A wonderful new month, the month of Nisan, the month of redemption. And may this be the month when Mashiach comes and redeems us all. Have a great day. <laughs>